So what's the deal with Flowdesk anyways? Is it just a pretty email marketing tool that doesn't really work that great? Or is it worth looking into? Hey there, welcome to my channel. Have you been wondering about Flowdesk or email marketing? So Flowdesk is still a fairly new email marketing tool to the scene and today I'm dropping all the details, the pros and the cons, because it is the tool I use. Is it perfect? No, but I have yet to find any tool I use in my business that is absolutely perfect. Hey there, I am Kate Danielle, a graphic designer and online entrepreneur, and my mission is simply just to help you work smarter uh, because I know what it's like trying to learn and do all the things as a busy mom. So I want to help you out through my tools and resources. Before I dig in to the back end of Flowdesk and kind of reviewing all its features, I want to tell you why I even switched in the first place. I have been with Flowdesk between a year and a half uh, to just under two years. And I was previously using ConvertKit and in full transparency, ConvertKit's a solid tool as well. It's a, it is a great option. Uh, the problem I was having was that back then I was doing a really awesome job at growing my email list, but I was not utilizing it to its fullest potential yet. So my price in ConvertKit was going up, 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 and I was not seeing a great return yet. So when I discovered Flowdesk and all its beautiful layouts and its really great rate because it's in beta, I decided to give it a try and I love it. Now at the time of this recording, Flowdesk is still in beta. So are there some features missing that I would love to see? Of course, but it, it is working for me and I kind of like to be with a growing company, especially one that has demonstrated that they really listen to its users. And when features are requested by so many of their users, they will bump it up in the priority list of making it happen. So as a graphic designer, wanting the pretty layouts and wanting to 10x my list without that raising price, I decided to give Flowdesk a try. At the time of this recording, it is still in beta, and if you use my affiliate link, you can lock in 50% off the monthly rate, no matter your list size. I'm sorry. <laughs> there might be some background noise in here, like cars cranking, birds chirping. It is very hot in my place today, so I'm enjoying the cool rainy air with my doors open, and I'm just going to go with it, uh, because I believe in comfort. <laughs> so, if you want to lock in a uh, a rate of $19 a month, which is what I pay at the time of this recording, use my affiliate link and that locks it in no matter how big your list grows. I have no idea when that deal is going to stop. So again, that is just at the time I'm recording this. It's um, Mark <laughs> horns honking now. I might have to shut my door. It was not this loud a few minutes ago. Uh, today is March 25th, so they are still in beta, but they've been putting out some customer surveys, so I do think they are preparing to, to change up their pricing model, because I know it won't stay this way. But again, use if you want to give it a try, use my affiliate link. You'll get a month free to see if you like it, and after that month, you'll be locked in at that 50% off. Um, but let's dig into all the details of what I like and dislike about it so you know if it's even worth your time. Okay, so here I am in my Flowdesk account, and you can see across the top there are four main sections here. Your first one is your emails. So this is where I basically create emails that I'm sending out to my entire list, or if I just want to send it out to a certain segment, um, I can do that too and segments are how they it's basically tags it's called tags in a lot of other um, email tools they call it segments so it's like a phrase of how my list is divided up based on what they purchased or what they opted in on or if you're a blogger you might have segments based on your different topics things like that one of the coolest things about Flowdesk is how pretty it looks. Now, there is a lot of debate on whether you should send image-heavy emails or not. I'm seeing really great open rates, and um, 
send rates, which we'll get into with Flowdesk. And I like for my emails to look pretty. So when you create that button, when you click that button to create a new email, you can come browse all their templates to help you get started. They're um, really pretty. Uh, I feel like they have a very magazine vibe. So all kinds of fun templates. I like to set up my own, so I click the start from scratch. And you'll see it populates a few things. I have, um, this is my logo, so it always makes it really small. Uh, but what you'll see that, that I do is once I create an email template, I just duplicate it to create a new email. Um, so I stretch all the way, that all the way out to make it go across. I can see how you have a default text box and button. You can delete these out if you don't need them. Uh, a social media link. I only have Instagram hooked up, it looks like. You can also click these pluses, and this is where the magic really happens. You can add in these fun layouts, which these are the magazine style layouts. The one I use a lot is this one. So you can pop in a picture, you can make these whatever color you want them to be. And then when I create my second section, I can come over here and flip it. And so I could change this to two. And you can link these buttons up. I think they're a, a fun layout. The layouts are fun to explore. The only thing here is you can add GIFs in Flowdesk if you're just using the image block, but you can't add them in the layouts for some reason. Um, hopefully that's something that will change because I do like to use GIFs. So these are all the tools you have to basically create an email. You can um, add, pull in a video straight from YouTube or wherever. And so basically you click this, you put your link in and it put, creates the play button. You can add text there, but I always delete it because I imagine it would be hard to read. Um, but this is what this looks like in action. This is one I sent out yesterday. Um, where I've embedded two videos and when they click on it, it takes them right to the YouTube video or wherever the, you know, the, you have the video hosted. Love that feature. It saves time from actually making um, a, the thumbnail with a, like a fake play button over it. You can pull in Instagram. So sometimes I include this at the bottom of emails and it just will automatically populate your last three images. You can do link bars, buttons, dividers, all kinds of stuff. And some of that's already in there, like your address footer and things like that. You can see how it's going to look on a screen and mobile. And of course, you can like change up your fonts, your font size, colors. You can add a background. So I can do something like that. And then if I wanted my email to not be white, you can do that too. Lots of cool things to do there. Like I mentioned, when I get one set up, I will just come in here and click duplicate and it'll copy it right over here. And then I can go in, edit it and just type in the new content I need that day, delete out things I don't need. I can duplicate a section of text. So if I need more text somewhere else and you can drag things around and get them in the right order. So I really love coming out and coming in here and laying out a new email. I think they're super fun and make your emails fun and pretty for your readers. So the next section up here is forms and this is how you get people on your email list. Say so you, you have a freebie, you can create some kind of forms. Again, they have fun layouts for these as well, like a pop-up type, uh, a ribbon type, which is what I use most often, and a full page. And um, you can see here are some I've used. These are my most current ones. You can change the color that you want your button. I delete out all the text because I pop this on a page in my WordPress site in Divi where I already have a call to action formatted there in Divi. And I'm just gonna come in here and edit and show you kind of what this looks like. This is where you design it, click on it. I get um, my options here. Once you get that set up, click next. 
You can decide whether you want double opt-in or not. I don't ever do that. Like continue. You can tell it to notify you or not when someone subscribes. I never have that on. I do not need that notifications. Uh, this is a key feature for me. You can either just have a basic display success message like, great, you're opted in, your thing's on your way, or you can have it redirect to a page, which is what I use a lot, and I redirect people to a thank you um, like tripwire page. And then here's where you get your code to plug it in. Now, when you're first setting this up, let's go back, you'll have the option to assign it to a segment, but since it's already set up, you can click on these three dots here and ch change segments. And that's basically how I have it tagged. So when people come in that form, they get tagged 10 free Canva templates. So I know that is the opt-in that they claimed. And it's also set up in my workflows. So that segment is telling Flowdesk where to send them and what workflow to send them to, which is our next tab. This is the key, a key feature for me because this is essentially how I run my business is funnels and email workflows. So just continuing on with the Canva templates that we were just looking at, I can come in here and view details and we'll go over um, and see how this is set up. I'm just going to do a quick overview, but I'm going to have a whole separate video on setting up email workflows. So if it's done by the time you're watching this, it'll pop up somewhere above. Otherwise, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned for more email marketing videos. But you can see here, I have my trigger, which is that segment, and it tells to deliver the email with the links they need to claim their opt-in. And you can do time delays, you can send more emails, and you can have conditions, which says, you know, if they have done X, Y, or Z, send them this or exit them from this workflow if not you know i have different things to send them etc the last section here is audience now this is one place where there is something missing here for me in other tools that i've used there has been a broad analytics meaning i could kind of get a broad view on how my list was growing or not growing uh, based on the day and week now that's not something flowdesk has here yet but like I said it's in beta so I'm hoping that will come if I click over to segments I do kind of get a total of subscribers now this is a little misleading because when people unsubscribe they are still counted here so I click on view and filter and I will click unsubscribe which I just did this because I recorded this whole video without sound a few moments ago but anyways I apply the filter and I just go um, select them all and delete them all now I don't know if that's best practices but to me if they've unsubscribed I just want to get rid of them so I have real numbers and I can also see based on tags so like I know this tag is based on a form and that's how many people I have currently if I want to see how many people have come through the form, it will tell me here if I click on the little graph icon. Even though I don't have that big overview of analytics, Flowdesk actually has some really good am analytics on the email level. So if I come click on these bars, it's first going to give me this brief overview. And then if I click on view details, it opens up an entire separate page. I can see um, how many it was sent to and how many it was delivered to. So meaning some of it um, might have bounced. I can see how many opens, clicks, and I can actually click on these, see who opened, who. Um, that's generally something I don't need to see unless you know someone's claiming they couldn't find the email, something didn't go right. I can go, you know, kind of dig deeper and see what's going on. Here's my percentages, my open rate and click through rate. And this email, I have not done a resend on yet. I always resend to unopens, which they allow you to do after 24 hours. And that usually will bumps this up even higher. I love this opens by device and clicks by, de by device because I can see most of my people are opening it on desktop. So I really need to make sure I'm optimizing for desktop. Again, you know, it clicks by device, which it makes sense that it's going to be fairly similar. This is my deliverability rate, 99%. And then down here, unsubscribes, that's just natural. That's going to happen as your list grows. You're going to get unsubscribes every time you send an email 
which I have come to appreciate. Bounces. Again, I can see who bounced, but if it's a soft bounce, Flowdesk will try to resend it. Down here it says the inbox was unavailable, which could happen for various reasons, and that would be a soft bounce, which Flowdesk will try to resend, or it says they were no longer on your list. I can also dig into analytics in my workflows as well. If I click here, I can kind of see total subscribers, who's completed, who's still in it, and kind of get some of these same style analytics. And if I click over on details, I can do the same where I can click on each email. That's, <laughs> we need someone else to opt in. <laughs> that is not a fun number. One more thing I want to touch on is if you're interested in trying out Flowdesk, which I think you should, I think it's a great tool to get started with, but if you already have a list, you can upload a CVS file of your list, which you can download from your current tool. Now, I didn't have to go through this process, but if you have, um, I'm not sure what the number is, but if it's a large list, Flowdesk now wants to review that. I know they've been working on making that seamless, so what I suggest is using the affiliate link, but getting your month free before you completely leave your current list, um, just to make sure you like it. I really love it, but everyone has their own preferences. Now, if you were just starting out from scratch, I think Flowdesk is the perfect tool for you. One other aspect that is currently missing from Flowdesk is it does not integrate with very many things right now. I believe it integrates with Shopify, which is not a tool I use. Other email platforms like ConvertKit kind of seamlessly integrate with lots of other tools such as WooCommerce and um, different course platforms and things like that. Being that Flowdesk is still in beta, those integrations just aren't there yet. Now I do use Zapier to make up that difference and I'm happy with that. Obviously, as Flowdesk grows and comes out of beta, I believe we'll see more and more integrations, just like I believe we'll see more analytics. And even with the things that I feel like are missing from Flowdesk right now, I still love it and it's been a great tool. And I've just, in the year and a half to two years I've been with them, I have seen many awesome upgrades like the analytics that I've shown you um, that has been upgraded. The ability to pull in the video thumbnail, that was a feature added. Um, they've added new layouts and one of the biggest things that I saw a lot of people in the com Facebook group asking for over and over was the ability to resend to unopens. They made that a priority. So speaking of the Facebook group, it's a really great place to go, ask questions, get advice, troubleshoot if something's not working, make sure you have something set up right. Now, one thing that has come up in the Facebook group is it can seem like there's nothing but issues with Flowdesk because that's all that, you know, is kind of being talked about in the group. But you have to keep in mind that people aren't coming in there going, everything's working perfectly, hooray! I mean, people just don't take the time to do that most of, you know, most of the time. So people do take the time to go troubleshoot and ask um, what's going on. And I have seen the team at Flowdesk be very helpful and very supportive and quick to respond to posts like that. Now, I'm going to be doing separate videos on how I use email marketing in my business and how I integrate Flowdesk with Zapier. If at the time of the recording or if at the time you're watching this, they're already um, done, they'll pop up a uh, above. But if not, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you found this review useful, please hit that like button too. It honestly, it makes my day and helps me grow my business here on YouTube. And I believe that we can all li lift each other up with small actions like those. Now, I kind of breeze through all the features that Flowdesk has. So if you have any questions about Flowdesk or email marketing in general, please leave it in the comments below. I will be getting back to those and making new content answering your questions. So friends, until next time, think like a boss, play like a mom. Cheers.